so yeah, um, Skydrift sort of prompted me to come chat with you guys on a fairly open book uh, assignment. It was kind of just, hey, like, come talk about Verify and come talk about, you know, what you learned um, over the last little bit. So yeah, I'm going to just do that and uh, make some time for questions afterwards. Hopefully I don't say anything I'm not supposed to, but uh, should be should be fun. So uh, I had my own land acknowledgement. I'll just add that um, I attended Wilfrid Laurier University on the Brantford campus, and that's traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and New neutral peoples. Um, and, you know, I'm personally really grateful to have had the opportunity to learn and grow on that land, which uh, continues to be cared for by those uh, first peoples of Canada. So um, yeah, lots of lots of good links in that first land acknowledgement, though. So I'll, uh, I'll breeze past this. Um, yeah, gonna go over some stuff, talk about Verify, because that's like the, the headliner, um, sort of launching an app as a government, how that got prototyped, how that works. Um, talk about shipping it, talk about how research studies are hard and how resourcing is sort of the, the theme around what I'm going to talk about is that resourcing is the important part of continuing to scale prototyping in government. So um, yeah, if you live in Ontario or you have family that lived in Ontario, they probably interacted with the app that we made. Um, <laughs> it was um, sort of... Uh, mandated for a very brief period of time after uh, the January uh, restrictions, but before that it was uh, available optionally uh, for businesses to use. Uh, essentially, it's a tool that businesses had to um, scan vaccine proofs so that they could let people in knowing that they had uh, two doses of a vaccine. Um, it was used very widely, uh, 2 million downloads, around 40 million scans, uh, and it was uh, very high up on the App Store rankings. Um, at the time, uh, this was sort of humbling and also kind of expected considering, um, the press around it. And it was just like very much at the center of everything for a hot minute. Um, so I presume this will be my, uh, 15 minutes of fame. We'll have been working on this project and reaching this many people. Uh, and yeah, it launched and it all went totally fine and nothing bad happened. Uh, okay. That. That's not true, but uh, a lot of users, a lot of scans, and uh, a lot of work went into it. So I'm gonna sort of walk through how we arrived there and and sort of what it took to get there and what we learned from it. So um, essentially the government of the day uh, doesn't really wanna be associated with COVID restrictions. Um, this is you know my personal opinion. I don't think they'd ever tell you that, um, but um, I, I think there was some hesitance with this app to um, sort of put this thing out and have it come from uh, Ontario itself. Uh, there was sort of the hope that we wouldn't have to have it come to that point. Um, but we, we did launch and it was branded as the government of Ontario's app. Uh, we did own it, which is good. Uh, it launched to middling app store reviews, some of which you can see on the side there, some of which think the app is great and works super well. Some of them calling it communist, which is interesting. Um, and then some of them uh, much more vulgar than that, but you can check those out because the app's live on the app store. So if you're really curious what people have to say, go ahead and do that. Um, how do we get there? There's a lot um, that goes into launching an app as, as many of you know, but um, especially in government when you're on such a tight timeline. So essentially over the course of um, about a month, it was 44 days from start to finish. Um, well, start to V1 launching. Um, I got a message on a Sunday and because I'm a loser, I checked my Slack on Sunday and it said, uh, hey, can you prototype something like this? We got to show um, some sort of minister. I can't remember if it was just Deputy Hartley or if there was um, somebody who was higher up in the government that wanted to see a proof of concept. And then naturally I just jumped in Figma because it seemed like a cool opportunity to do some meaningful work. Um, so, you know, you do some proof of concepts, uh, you figure out the partnerships as far as development. Um, that was obviously with Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment. So you might know, um, we essentially borrowed some of their devs to help us turn our prototypes into reality, which is great. Uh, and then, yeah, basically, um, right at first, um, as an organization, we sort of made the decision that we wanted to build this app and maintain this app, um, instead of buying the app from a vendor or, uh, somebody else like, um, another province would have done. Um, so, you know, then working through sort of the typical launch stuff, um, content design, user flow, and, and we were able to squeeze in a usability testing, um, study over a week there where we just sort of hopped from event space to event space in downtown, showing them a test flight 
version of the app. Um, and yeah, um, pre, also showing that test flight version of the app to the associate minister of digital government in the office kitchen. That was a fun day. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the long and the short of it was there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of different people on all. I'd say there are probably different, probably about 40 different contributors over the course of the four weeks, that's people in policy, that's people in tech, that's devs, that's project management, that's um, all the way up the chain. So um, lots and lots of stuff, over 650 screens, uh, myself personally prototyped. Um, that's like a rough estimate. It's probably a little bit more than that, but uh, yeah, all that stuff happened. And the reason that I'm telling you all of that is because it's very complex and I don't want it to come across like prototyping is the only important part of getting something like this out of the door. Um, there's policy, there's legal, there's like all kinds of different things that need to be worked out for something like this to happen. Um, but yeah, it essentially from the beginning, from that first day, excuse me, um, just prototyping every day, new screens, trying to figure out what the most simple user flow was and how we could work through that. So um, you know, do, doing that lap of usability testing and trying to figure that out. The, the thing that was really scary was that this is the first time we were doing usability sessions in person, um, uh, post pandemic. And so that was slightly terrifying to go back out to businesses in this environment that was like moderately, um, on, we were just all unsure about it. I think this was, um, somewhere around November. So this was, uh, right in the thick of it. Um, I think one of the things with prototyping, um, especially in government, that is a real challenge is recruiting users and trying to convince um, stakeholders of the value of doing like quick iterative prototyping. Um, but for Verify, it was actually easier um, because of the amount of pressure that was on the project and because of how quickly we needed to turn from one thing to the other. Um, I think it sort of went in and out the door uh, with authority and, and with confidence. Uh, we weren't arguing about a timeline. It was just as soon as we could get it out. We weren't arguing about budget. It was take what you need to get this done well. Um, was an ownership. After the first like three days, we knew we were going to own it and, and sort of release it as soon as we could. Um, so yeah, um, normally this is a thing that in government, in my couple years of being here, I've found is a little bit of a challenge generating that buy-in around like really quick prototyping. Um, especially when it comes to um, like screening users and really um, sort of doing the the recruiting uh, specifically can can be a real nightmare depending on who you're working with. So, um, but again, sort of the central theme of of what I want to talk about here is that this this project and the way that it launched and and the success of the application was really because it was properly resourced. And and when I say resourced, I don't just mean like money or um, people like it, it, it fully had like organizational buy-in and, and some of that is money and some of that is people, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's also a luxury that I recognize that we had. Um, I think with everybody's eyes on it and with it being such a clear user need that we had identified, um, even months before work had started on it, um, as something that we were going to have to, you know, make a plan for, um, it, if it hadn't been properly resourced, I don't know how it would have went. Um, there was there was really true buy-in, and and that was really I think why it ended up being successful. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, again, like COVID projects are super high priority um, always, and I think that was part of this buy-in. Um, but like really, I think organizationally, the the fight to own the app was was super important, and the way that we um, were able to demo it really quickly, helped generate that buy-in, um, without the prototype on that first day. I don't know that, um, the associate minister would have felt as strongly, uh, that we could build this. Um, and, and it wasn't even a very good prototype, to be honest with you. It, it, the, the final app didn't really look very much like what we had first done, but, uh, the low fidelity version of it really helped to generate that buy-in and say, Hey, this is actually something that we can do. So, um, you know, and, and again, like we, we had development resources on staff. This is something that um, not every team in government has the luxury of. And, and it's something that I think could really improve the speed at which things can go in government is having a proper development team um, and, and a properly resourced one. Um, I just find that 
um, being able to transition from idea to execution so quickly was a big part of why the app was able to reach so many people and do so well and, and why we were able to have you know six versions of it in test flight or whatever however many versions it was um the ods is the ontario digital service we're like a small team within government if i've referred to it already i apologize for not defining it earlier um we're we're about 200 people and um you know, we, we were built well, um, which is part of why this app was able to go well and part of why the prototyping was able to like have space uh, to do it. So there's a there's a great design system in place. We already had modular components. We were moving really fast and, and we had the right tools. We had the right leadership um, and, and we had expertise, which was really, really important. Um, I think the, the thing about our org is that um, we're, 200 in a public service of 60,000 uh, <laughs> when you get into the broader public service, right? So um, some of those people are tech practitioners and some of them aren't. And it's uh, it's a tricky thing to try to, uh, to make space for this type of work to happen. But um, there's, there's a lot of good practitioners across that um, bit that are doing that. Um, that's not to say that, you know, it went super perfectly or anything. Um, I think, what, what do I say here on my notes? I wanna make sure that I don't uh, misrepresent what I meant to say. I'd continue research after an initial engagement. Yeah, so I think a couple months before we um, officially started work on Verify, we had been talking to people about it. I remember uh, polling my family at the dinner table about you know, how they'd feel if they had to present their proof of vaccination in this thing or in that thing um, in, in different sort of contexts. And, and I think, uh, we had the right idea at that point. And if I could go back in a time machine, I would encourage that work to continue. We might have found some uh, some problems that we didn't really um, see until later in the process because we uh, didn't continue that work right away. Um, from just a pure prototyping perspective, uh, um, I think I had a component library going by the third week, but really it was um, it was a little late. I, I didn't I don't think I understood just how, many revisions I was going to need to make. I sort of thought it might be like one, two, maybe three, but we ended up with, and, and I'm going to show the Figma in a second here. Um, we ended up with like 12 or 13 different like app flow revisions and, and staying organized with that is a little bit chaotic. So, um, you know, start a component library early and, and try to keep things modular that way. Um, and, you know, if I could go back, I'd probably practice my briefing before running into the minister in the kitchen in the office, which wasn't something that I know you could do until it happened to me. That was a fun story. Thank you, Minister Rashid, for scaring the heck out of me on my first day in the office. Um, and then, yeah, prototyping in government. Like, I, I didn't... I think that resourcing theme that sort of has come up over and over again is sort of the, the crux of what I'm trying to get at here. But I, I think we spend so much money on procuring software solutions, and we spend a ton of energy on... Um, you know, proofing vendors and making sure that they're um, adequate for our needs. And, and I really think that if we put more time into prototyping and, and put more resourcing into um, developers uh, across the organization, not just within ODS, but within the broader public service across the, the province and the country, um, we'd be able to build more things in-house, which really helps keep things moving quickly and, and helps us, um, I guess, maintain control over uh, the features and and also just the um, ability to you know make changes really quickly. Um, it moving fast is something that is um, seen as risky or intimidating in government, um, and and that's not a reflection of any one particular ministry or, or one particular group in government. I think I've run into that no matter who it is that I'm talking to or or helping as a partner, um, and I, I think when something needs to happen quickly, it can. And that was really what I what I took away from Verify is when the right people believe that something needs to happen, that thing can happen really quickly. So, um, you know, I'd like to see that scale and I'd like to see the, the rapid prototyping approach really uh, get some legs. Um, and, and yeah, that, I, I think some of that is, is the talent pipeline too, like making sure that we're hiring the right people and being able to retain the right people, so. Um, yeah, uh, so that's like the slides, but then I wanted to show the Figma prototype and like just talk through that a little bit. So let me switch which screen I'm sharing. Boop, boop, boop. 
Uh, Y'all can see this now? Cool. Um, so this is the Figma. Uh, it's very, very laboriously long. Um, <laughs> we started out um, literally just like documenting questions about it and, and the app sort of adhering to this smart standard that we knew of vaguely and, and trying to uh, sort of adhere to that from a tech perspective. So um, talking about how it works and, and going through that whole thing. Uh, and then, you know, ultimately uh, we made the decision to cut a lot of the data that's included in the smart health standard um, as part of our, you know, prototyping phase. Um, this was something that um, sort of everyone could agree was the right path, but I, I don't think we knew right away how we were going to do that and still have a degree of confidence in the result. Um, I think when we were first building this out, it, we thought that we needed to have the, the business who was scanning it um, sort of compare. Um, but, you know, ultimately that eventually goes down and we, we start to show less information. And, and so you, you go through this prototyping process and you try to figure out all the different uh, nooks and crannies, but realistically you do screen after screen and you do a bunch of them over and over again. Uh, it, it's, it's wild to me that this is a one function app and it was so many screens, like we're nine prototypes in, so we're probably 400 different screens in and, and some of them are the, the same as they were when they started, but very few of them are. And, and it's, um, it's all sort of organized chaos, but I think the, the thing that helped enable it was like the the buy-in and the, the amount of people that said like this needs to happen um and so yeah i hope that as as government moves forward we continue to you know push for things to happen and um apps to get launched and stuff to get done and and specifically some of the the best parts of this process are, are that ownership of the application and and the approvals getting like streamlined right through like I, I i don't know that a project like this would ever go through the normal paced gating and and ever sort of see the light of day but it's something that's um originally as complex as this um like showing a lot of info trying to figure out all this um, crap ended up being this really simple easy to understand user flow for for businesses and ended up being actually um, pretty well received, uh, which is an actual miracle because I don't think any of us anticipated it going as well as it did. So, um, yeah, that's sort of just me talking about Verify for 15 minutes. I'm a little bit over, but uh, yeah, I'll go back to my thanks slide and, and take your questions because uh, I imagine something like this will inspire opinions and to drive conversation. <laughs> yeah, thanks. 